I have to admit that my channel has gotten a bit of a reputation for exploring the philosophical influences in Nier Automata from every conceivable angle. But as we run down to the most obscure and minute details, writing entire scripts dedicated to a single thinker is becoming more difficult. Beyond that, as Nier has expanded into primarily a crossover property with other video games, the crossover content is far less about philosophy and far more about homaging Yoko Taro's characters and game design. So let's explore all the philosophers that are present, but whose philosophies are not given much coverage or metaphorical critique in the game. I had originally hoped to do a video for each of them, but give this video a chance. I believe you will find a consistency of themes that Yoko Taro was exploring through these thinkers. George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, born in 1770 Germany, was a prominent philosopher of the German idealist movement. Hegel is most famous for what is now called Hegelian dialectic. He defined dialogues of philosophy as two ideas, a thesis and an antithesis, coming together in hearty debate, stripping both ideas in what they are lacking, and resulting in a third, new idea called a synthesis. Hegel is depicted as a series of Goliath-class spherical robots working together. Their inclusion in the story is an illusion to help illustrate the plot point of A2 and 2B being fused into one being when A2 receives all of 2B's memories through her sword. For the philosophy literate player, it thus leaves open the hope that 2B is not in fact gone. Though for players who miss the philosophical illusion, the status of A2's characterization as suddenly sympathetic to 9S can be somewhat confusing. The main critique of Hegel comes with the Red Girl, the machine network's stored simulation of human consciousness. When A2 allows the Red Girl to populate and take on multiple perspectives, they come to a difference of opinion about whether to kill A2. They fail to reach an understanding and choose instead to kill each other. The idealistic part of Hegelian dialectic is in the assumption that dialogue must lead to synthesis of ideas as opposed to violence and war. A2 retorts, they're acting like humans. Narratively, however, it is in conscientiously choosing Hegelian dialectic, a synthesis of conflicting ideas that creates the opportunity for an eventual return to essentialist themes at ending E. Soren Kierkegaard is given a surprisingly prominent position in Nier Automata, despite what is ultimately little commentary on the overall philosophy. Staging Machine Kierkegaard as the ending sequence for both Route A and B, leading up to fighting Eve as the final boss. Kierkegaard was born in 1813 in Denmark, growing up in Copenhagen where he spent most of his life. Kierkegaard depicted an individual person's relationship with meaning as a sort of progression from a life that prioritizes aesthetics to one that prioritizes ethics, and then finally transitioning to the religious life as a kind of Hegelian dialectical synthesis of aesthetics and ethics. When you prioritize aesthetics, you are inspired by potential and infinite possibility and so you inject interest into any subject through nihilist rejection of meaning, imagining alternatives, and inserting ironic or arbitrary practices to further entertain yourself. This is criticized by the person who has rejected aesthetics and moved on to prioritizing ethics. Aesthetics are escapist and fail to recognize the communal nature of life, art, and the responsibilities that occur when we choose to engage rather than retreat or ignore. When you prioritize ethics, you are inspired by seeing the world as it is, taking the arts for what they communicate rather than just how you can respond to them. But both approaches have their own limits. When a person is ultimately confronted with an existentialist crisis of meaning under Kierkegaard's thought, a person must find their own way of making a sort of leap of faith 
to become a religious, specifically Christian, person. And it is through faith, through the paradoxical nature of religion, that you can find inspiration in infinite possibility, but without the egotistical rejection of reality, nor the rejection of social obligations that that entails. Yoko Taro's critique of this model of religious life being an ideal synthesis of the aesthetic possibility and ethical realism is done through the examples of violent and radical cults wherein the religious personality is one that faces a crisis of meaning with a complete egotistical obsession of one's own infinite potential or of the potential of a religious figurehead, and that attitude is paired with a complete rejection of society and social obligations to bolster that sense of mob ego. In other words, Yoko Taro uses a practical acknowledgement of how religious communities form to demonstrate that the Hegelian synthesis of aesthetics and ethics through a leap of faith does not necessarily result in the synthesis of the best parts of each. Instead, the religious leap of faith that the machine lifeforms take into this pool of lava represents well, the synthesis of the worst parts of both. This reading of Kierkegaard's own self-importance can be drawn from his own writings. Kierkegaard, writing under the pseudonym Johannes Climacus, described his philosophy as self-preoccupation that was given universal importance by God. Bear with me for a moment. Duangzi, Mozi, Laozi, and Kongzi. All of these figures are names given to the giant orb machines, but none of them have much in the way of story or relevance to the game's side quests. They act as boss characters for specific milestones in the main quest, but their descriptions in the encyclopedia are not giving us more than a direct description either. I am rather disappointed to see that the game failed to represent these Chinese philosophers, or that they only represented them in name only, but didn't represent their philosophical system. But hey, Lao Tzu and Confucius have yin yang colors, and that's pretty cool. Immanuel Kant was a German-born Enlightenment thinker most noted for his ethical philosophy based on the categorical imperative, which reads, act only on that maxim which one could will universal. Even though he's one of my favorite philosophers, he's actually just the baby form of the more significant character of Ernest Bloch, whom we've already made a video for. Uh, no, I don't know why baby Ernest would be named after an older philosopher that had nothing to do with communism. The German idealist movement came from commentary on Immanuel Kant, Hegel was a part of the German idealist movement, and communism traces its own theoretical lineage to an evolution of Hegel, but that still doesn't explain why Kant is the baby. If you can figure out the connection, please write it in the comments so that I can include an asterisk in the description of this video. Also, like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications, I'm a good YouTuber, I promise! Karl Grün was a communist political philosopher as well as a contemporary of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. His contributions to communist philosophy are largely unknown in English-speaking circles, and the majority of his prominent books and essays remain untranslated. He is represented by this giant sea monster! When I first played the segment, I believed this would be a reference to Thomas Hobbes' Leviathan, but to my surprise, it points to another philosopher I hadn't heard of previously. But I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity, don't you agree? Like, you're going to put a literal leviathan in your game and not reference the leviathan or utilitarianism? Come on, my dude. That is not poggers. Karl Grün is an interesting figure precisely because his formulations of communism were staunchly opposed by Marx, and were thus the frequent subject of Marx's critiques of the young Hegelians. Their main point of difference being that Karl Marx saw Grün as overly idealistic or utopian, 
and that only practical, material factors matter to creating a socialist state. Whereas Grun argued that a true socialist state, the emancipation of the proletariat, required making the education, philosophy, and philosophical critique of socialism common among all citizens. While popularity flowed more toward Marx over time, Grun most assuredly shows a greater love for and faith in philosophy as a practice. The communist infighting that surrounded Grun is represented in Nier Automata by Pascal when he informs us that Machine Grun was known for being as likely to destroy other machines as it was androids. And Machine Grun, being exiled to the bottom of the ocean, is most likely referencing Karl Grun's own two real-world exiles, one for seditious pro-democratic publications, and after being welcomed back to Germany, a second for inspiring a violent revolt after giving a public speech. Whew! We did it! We finally are talking about a direct reference to Nietzsche. In more than five years of doing this channel, we are finally discussing a direct allusion to nietzsche that wasn't just an erroneously attributed theme by writers whose philosophical exposure is mostly just Nietzsche. Okay, I apologize. But misattributing Nietzsche to things is something of a meme among philosophers in academic circles. Even I have evoked Nietzsche's name to highlight a point of contrast, but I have not yet claimed any game has been directly influenced by Nietzsche. Everyone does it at some point, and almost no one actually knows Nietzsche's philosophy beyond his flowery language. There's no shame in being the boy who cried Nietzsche. Nietzsche is the Sigmund Freud of philosophy, but that is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's a very bad thing. Friedrich Nietzsche has been given a very small role in Nier Automata, which is surprising given how much more popular Nietzsche is among pop philosophy than other existentialists. After the intro sequence, Tubi makes an allusion to the God is Dead statement. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse? Or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle, and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. And then only a short preamble to Root B, this small machine pouring oil on the lifeless body of another, is Nietzsche. And some smaller lip service in a scene with Pascal played for humor. I see. It seems this Nietzsche was quite the profound thinker. Or perhaps he skipped right past profound and went straight to crazy instead. Oh well. Enough of that. I best go see the world for myself instead of burying my head in books. At most, I believe we could read this as a critique of a simplified understanding of the will to power through Croft, individual violent force, and through mocked, creating personal values and larger social structures. But no matter how much the little robot wills it, he has no power to change material fact. However, this is rehashing old ground for Yoko Taro, for a more complex exploration of the relationship between will and power, best look back to my videos on the original Nier, or Nier Replicant if you want something more modern. Most likely a reference to St. Augustine of Hippo, born in 354 AD, Western Roman Empire, in modern-day Algeria. He wrote many foundational ideas for both Christianity and for Western philosophy, including an epistemology of how God is constantly involved in human knowledge called Illumination Theory. He was the originator of the concept of Just War Theory juxtaposed sin as a physical limitation on free will, and asserted the unequivocal immorality of slavery for violating human nature as given by God. His machine reference is a large biped with many smaller machines for arms that shoot lasers. 
None of his philosophy seems featured for a direct commentary, but he is protected by many Nietzsche model machines who beg and grovel for you to not kill August. We still do, thus forming the third of three allusions to the Nietzsche quote. So let's take a moment to actually look at the oft-quoted statement. The full quote reads, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet known has bled to death under our knives. Who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must we ourselves not become gods simply to appear worthy of it? To quickly explain, Nietzsche either believed that post-Enlightenment thinkers could not rationally continue believing in God, or that we in fact killed off the Judean Christian God, which is unclear and both ideas have historical movements. But he believed that in committing this great evil, we humans gave ourselves the freedom to self-determine, to define our own essence. However, it is a further critique of Nietzsche to juxtapose him against Augustine, who presented sin as a limitation on the capacity of free will, because free will was the nature given to us by God. So which do you believe? Is God the source of our freedom, or is freedom the result of killing God? Perhaps Yoko Taro intended Nier Automata to be that sacred game that acted as atonement for humanity, to make us, as players and as humans, confront our ideas and our failures, played and repeated in Fast Forward, and after fully confronting every crisis of meaning, still finding a cause by which to value humanity as an idea. The value of humanity may itself be as nebulous as the idea of God, yet it is still right to find faith and hope in our potential for good. In the Final Fantasy XIV crossover raid, an evil overlord called Hobbs tortures the Quality Assurance Department of the Machine Factory, attacking the player under the assumption of the QA team rebelling, recharacterizing Hobbs' man is evil war of all versus all, and Leviathan solution as a misunderstanding of the needs of the masses, though it succeeds with convincing the machines to conform and obey, it gives the Final Fantasy XIV peoples a reason to unify and rebel, DPS never moves, healers adjust, if you fail the raid, Yokotaro deletes your Final Fantasy XIV account forever! <laughs> です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐藤です。佐